This memorial here in Washington, D.C., pays tribute to Americans killed during the longest and most unpopular war in this nation's history, the only war America ever lost. Vietnam lasted more than a decade. The horror and destruction have all been well documented. It was a political and emotional catastrophe for this country, and for many still haunted by their experience there, it may never go away. The war itself ended in 1975, the final debacle with thousands swept up in a crazy quilt of emotion. And that included many of the more than 640,000 Vietnamese who have since sought refuge in the United States. Yeah. This man claims to be the most famous of them, more than just an anonymous footnote to history. His name is Nguyen Cao Ki. Ki held many positions in Vietnam over the years, Air Force Commander, Vice President, and Premier. He had a reputation for flamboyance, and although it was never proven, it's been said he used his position and contacts to amass considerable wealth. The caption to this 1968 editorial cartoon by Bill Malden reads, to you it's a war, to me it's a living. I didn't even take one penny when I was general, uh, Air Force commander, and when I was premier. One penny. If you can find anyone that give me one penny for a favor, I give you a, my hand. You can think that I am a dumb politician, that I'm not a good fighter, but never, never say that I'm a corrupted. Today, he owns a liquor store in California. It is a small, family-run affair, and he says he is barely surviving. But Key's house nearby does not seem like the home of a poor man. He still travels widely and recently visited El Salvador. We asked Key about America's role in Central America and the inevitable comparisons to Vietnam. Are you saying, though, that the United States should either make a full-fledged commitment or not do anything? Yeah, I think better. Because like Vietnam, that's a lesson we learn. And uh, that's why now in Salvador, I told all of them, uh, my opinion with my, and my own experience in Vietnam, I will not trust the government. I will not trust the official. I will not trust the politicians. While in El Salvador, he suggested there are thousands of Vietnamese refugees worldwide prepared to fight communists in Central America. You are a warrior of uh, certain repute. Yes. Why don't you go down there? Yeah, I already told them. I already offer my volunteer. If the day you need me, I will come and fight the communists. What was their reply? They said, thank you, but uh, right now they don't need, I think, they, they think they can handle the problem themselves. As for the war in Vietnam, he ultimately blames the United States for the North Vietnamese victory. He says Washington called all the shots, even after the American troops pulled out. It's very sad that today that most of the people are trying to blame the loss of Vietnam on the Vietnamese and on people like me. Furthermore, Ki condemns those Americans who once opposed the war and today do not address the current political and economic situation in Vietnam. Many people outside of Vietnam, people like Jane Fonda or Senator McGovern, you know, they listen to their propaganda. But I think what happened now, uh, after 80 years of occupation of South Vietnam, uh, they opened their eyes. But instead of uh, saying something about that, like uh, they did you know, in, during the war, well, they chose to keep their mouth shut. We first spoke with Nguyen Cao Ki in 1975 at his villa in Saigon on the very last day of the war. At that time, despite all odds, he vowed to remain in Vietnam. 
I'd like you to listen to a interview. Do you fear for your life? I just said no, never. Sometime you and I, we have to die sometime, some way, uh, some way. <laughs> you wouldn't use that helicopter that's sitting outside? To go where? To try to get away. No, I don't think so. Why is that helicopter sitting outside? It's always there. You did take that helicopter the last day? Mm hmm. Uh, because at that time, at that moment, uh, I. I had hopes that uh, they will give me something uh, to fight the communists. Uh, you know, you, you can't fight by yourself with a cold 45. If Nguyen Cao Ki is perhaps the most famous Vietnamese refugee in America, another refugee, now living not far from this Vietnam memorial, is perhaps the most infamous. <laughs> This is the man who pulled the trigger. His name is Nguyen Nau Luan, and he was Saigon's chief of police. Luan's execution of a Viet Cong prisoner during the 1968 Tet Offensive provoked shock and outrage worldwide. What do you say to the people who look at what happened in Vietnam and think of you as a criminal? Well, that's kind of uh, tough to say. I don't think that I can explain what happened. To judge me, people have to be on the same spot, same moment, same time, same situation. Uh, then they may have a different point of view. Right now, my only answer is that I just let the man upstairs decide. Today, Luan runs a modest pizzeria in a suburban shopping mall. In 1978, the Immigration and Naturalization Service sought to rescind Luan's permanent resident status on the grounds of moral turpitude. However, Luan contends what he did was legal under the edict of military law. Nevertheless, he does regret he never confiscated the photographer's film. Still, for Luan, what happened in Vietnam that day happened a long, long time ago. For me, I make up my mind and just try to let everything that belonged to the past belong to the past. Luan says his life in America has been a struggle, but he is proud that his five children are doing well. When I apply for a job, I am overqualified. My wife speaks French a little bit. Do not speak English. So I couldn't find a job easily. And we have to rely on our family business and trying to learn to earn a living and trying to send the children as high as possible in college. But is Luan happy here? Well, happy or not, it's all relative. It all depends on the people living around you, accepting you or not. The customer living around, the children living around here, the family, if they accept us, they accept our children, that means that we belong to the same community. If happiness, as Luan says, is relative, feeling at home in America is another matter. And what Luan shares with Nguyen Cao Ki, besides notoriety, is a desire to return to Vietnam. Where you have your family with you, the children with you, it's your place to live. But, on another hand, your country, your people, that's different. You still dream about the day that you can come back. We have our, our own country, our own traditions, that I think it was, are one of the best in the whole world. That's why it's very difficult for me, even after eight years, to, to become really 
Americanized. This is Robert Wiener, CNN, on special assignment.